Welcome back. What's up, you guys? We are at Mount Helix. If you haven't noticed, well, are, are they? we? Uh, Where are we? Well, we're here at church. You're they... at Mount Helix right now, hopefully. But what if they're not there? You could be at home in your PJs. Wait a second. But we're also at Mount Helix with Anyway, them. doesn't matter. Yeah. Welcome to church. I ho I'm glad you're here. Wherever you are in the world, I'm glad you are at church. But we want to go over a few things before we get started with today's service. So pay attention. Yeah. So if you are at the Mount Helix service, you're going to notice that there's someone talking on stage and he has important things to say. So do not distract the adults around you or the pastor speaking on stage. If you want to laugh because <laughs> today's going to be funny, so you probably do. But do it super quietly or just do it in your head and then tell your parents all about how funny today's service was afterwards. Make sure you don't distract the people around you. That's right. So I'm ready to get started. Are you? Oh, I'm so ready to get started. You guys ready to get started? Oh, yeah. I think Wait, before what are we, we do... Doing? Happy, happy, happy hey, September Colts. nights, everybody. Hey, you see, we have been having all of those. Oh, I, I, like, I like green. <laughs> we have been having all of these special nights with church, and I just wanted to celebrate because we've been having the dinners, we've been having the desserts, that yeah. I think even if we're not going to be at church today, we should at least celebrate a little bit, you know? Okay. I like that idea. Yeah, and if idea. you remember, Cupcakes actually were in our last video, mm -hmm. and I remember that I was able to eat the cupcake faster than anybody else around us. Koi. Hey. Koi. I'm sorry, I just got distracted by good memories. Um, anyway, I got these cupcakes, but you know, it's okay if you guys can't keep up with how fast I can eat them. That's fine. That's fine with me. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying we're doing a cupcake eating contest? Oh, we can. I think Brooke wants us to do a cupcake eating contest. I'm down. Yeah? Um, I'm, I'm not gonna do that, but you guys can. I can try. Oh, well, her loss anyway, but we are gonna do a cupcake eating competition right now. So, you ready? Two. On three. On two. On one, go. Oh, this is not hard as I thought it was. Mm. This is minty. Quite, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm tapping out. Mm. I can't even get past the frosting. I mistake. A mistake? Mm -hmm. It sounds like you did. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what to say right now. <laughs> Do you need to go? You should leave. Well, we'll give Koi an intermission, and also Koi is now officially the cupcake champion. Yeah, I didn't even get through it. Tori gets second place. And I'm James. Well, I didn't compete, so I can't be a part of it. <laughs> anyway, welcome to church. I think we're ready. Let's rock on. All right, it is time to head into our next thing now. Tiffany, mm -hmm. where are all the kids right now? Um, space. What? How did we get here? No, we can't be in space. We're not. In, the kids are not in space. Aww. Come on, you okay. know where they're at. Where are they yes. at? The Wild Wild West. Uh, okay, we we did this before. We've already been to the Wild West. We can't be here again. No, no, no. Okay. No. Come on. Now tell where where are we at? What are we doing? We are on Mount Helix. We are on Mount Helix, and I hope that you guys are really enjoying church out on Mount Helix right now. But just like with every other kid's church, mm -hmm. it is time to go over our five, count them, five most important things. Now, Tiffany, do you know what the five most important things are? You know, I don't, Koi. I need some help with this. Well, I'm sure all the kids can help you out. Kay. And I can, I'll can. i be here to help you out, too. Thanks. So we need to start with the first most important thing. And that, Good. of course, is, everybody say it with me, say, God loves me. God loves me. There you go. And number two is, say, I have sinned. I have sinned. Yep, and number three is Jesus died for me. Jesus died for me. And now this fourth one has a little bit of a rhythm to it. Okay. So you need to say, I need to decide to live for God. Okay, I got this. I need to decide to live for God. There you go. And number five is go. go. Say go. Go. And tell others. And tell others. About Jesus. About Jesus. And there you go. That's all of the five most important things. That's not that hard. I could do that. No. And we're happy that you guys helped Tiffany learn along with Thanks, us. Thanks, guys. But it is time to move on to something that you all have been waiting for. Are you ready? I'm so ready. All right. We're going to tell you it on three. Ready? One, two, three. It's game, game time. time. And let's go to game time. Hello, everyone. 
Welcome to game time. It is time for me to just absolutely dominate game time because if I remember right, when we used to film all these games, I would win everything. No, 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 no. Koi means it's time for him to lose game time because no. I'm gonna win. No. Boys, we got this. I will be your champion today. We are gonna win these games 100 percent 100 percenter. It is a guarantee that I will end up winning this game. Okay, you can keep telling yourself that, but I'm pretty confident in this game. Okay, well, as you can see, we have all of our cards laid out right here on the table, as they say, and we are gonna try to shoot them off of the table with these rubber bands. Now, if the card falls flat on the table, it does still count, so it's whoever knocks over all four of their cards first win. So, okay. in your seats, guys, try to stay a little bit quiet, but everybody stay with me, say five, four, four. Three, Three, two, two one. one, go. Oh no. <laughs> no. Victoria's focusing because she's gone quiet. She was talking a lot before the camera started rolling. I'm gonna win, I got no. this. I got, oh, it moved. Oh, got it. That's two. Sorry. I keep spinning them. It needs to Wait. fall. No, she's that was aiming. close. You're spending too much time. It's gotta be a quick fire. You gotta have a strategy. There you go, two in a row. No. Look, I'm not oh. even gonna look. You ready? I have oh. missed. <laughs> oh, that was close. No! <laughs> now we're just fighting over who picks up rubber bands. No! <laughs> Champion! Keep okay. firing them into the ceiling. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome back to round two. Round one, Koi annihilated Victoria. Like she, he said he, she would. <laughs> anyway. Here we are, round two. Who's gonna win, boys or girls? Get ready. This game begin in three, two, one. Ow. Oh yeah, <laughs> take that. Oh no, no, no. Okay. Whoa, wait, okay, I was not expecting to do so good. Yeah, I gotta go fast as she What? Ow! Okay, I'm usually really bad at this. That hurt, that hurt this is very exciting. Okay. Okay. I don't like this game. Okay. Ah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna send my hospital bills to Koi for my fingers. Well. Girls are the champions, as expected. <laughs> okay, this is game number two, and today we are going to make Victoria and Koi into mummies. And of course, the girls are gonna win because that's what we do, right, Victoria? Of course. Yeah. I don't lose. I do not lose. Koi needs to be humbled. So, we are going to get rid of this whole roll of toilet paper by having Victoria hold on to one side, Koi will hold on to his roll, and they are going to spin as fast as they possibly can. Whoever finishes their roll first and looks the most mummy-like, the girls, by the way, they will be the winners. And of course, we, I mean, we don't really even need to play, right, James? We already know who's gonna win. No, 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 let's do this. I okay, forgot. okay. Okay, are you ready? Count it down with us. Three, Three two, two, one, spin! Whoa, whoa, whoa girls, come on! Go, go, yeah. go, go, go! No, no. Oh! <laughs> Let's see. Oh no, I lost my toilet paper! Keep it going faster! Faster! Oh, ours looks so much better. So much better, so much better. Girls are for sure about to win this game. But you do need to spin a little faster. Spin a little faster. I'm getting real dizzy. My head. Oh my gosh. Just suck it up. You got this. Or boys should just give up instead. I'm going. Where were they? I'm going. I can't see. We're so close. We're so close. Uh oh, boys are gonna finish first. Faster. Faster. He's not falling to me. We won. Look, look. Okay, but girls is better. Whoa. Oh, this game goes to the boys. But the girls, oh dear lord. And cut. Cut.
All right, guys, we're going to get ready to hear today's lesson. So I want you guys sitting up straight. I want you guys listening, and I want you guys to understand the importance of today's lesson. Today, we're going to be talking about the Bible is full of wisdom for your life. So that's an important thing, an important topic. So I want you guys listening and paying attention. The lesson starts now. For this week's lesson intro, we're going to be talking about bananas, one of my overall favorite time snacks. They're so delicious and they're full of all kinds of nutrients and vitamins that are so good for your body. They have this, it has this thing called potassium, which is really good for your heart and for all your blood. Bananas are just overall amazing for your body. And we're going to be talking about something that's also really good for your body the Bible. The Bible is filled with wisdom, just like bananas are filled with nutrients and vitamins, all these different things. The Bible is the same way. It has all these wisdom and all these tips and truths to help us lead our lives. So the Bible is full of many different people, many different events, so many different stories and decisions that were made that we can read and it impacts our life because it helps us to give us wise counsel and all these different wisdom and tips on how to live our lives. So just like bananas have all these nutrients and different things, the Bible does the same for our lives. It helps gives us wise counsel against making good choices and wise counsel against making bad choices. So that's our top truth. The Bible gives wisdom to our lives. Our memory verse is Psalms 19.7. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect. It gives us new life. His teaching lasts forever and they give wisdom to the ordinary people. But bananas don't do good if you just look at them. It's not going to help your body by just looking at them. With bananas, you have to peel them, you have to eat them, and let it digest in your body. And the Bible is the same way. You have to read it and you have to study it. And most importantly, you have to imply, apply all the different things that you're reading into your life. So just like you would eat a banana and enjoy it after school or at school or whatever, you have to do say, same thing with your Bible. There's all kinds of different verses and Proverbs and all these different books of the Bible that can help give you wise counsel on different things and give, provide you with wisdom. We can learn a lot from the Bible. One thing we learn about is some super wise people. Do you know who the wisest person in the Bible is? Well, if you guess King Solomon, you are right. So we're going to watch a video to learn why is King Solomon the wisest person in the Bible. We're going to learn all about his life and a dream that he had that taught us why he became the wisest man. So let's watch this video and see what happens. I want you to pay attention to what he asked the Lord. Stories of the Bible. Solomon asks for wisdom. This is Solomon. Hey there. Solomon was the king of Israel after his father, David. Solomon loved God, and God was with Solomon and made him very powerful. Oh, yeah! Mm. One night, God appeared to Solomon in a dream. Whoa! God said, what do you want? Ask and I will give it to you. Solomon said, you showed great and faithful love to David, my father and now you have made me king in his place. But then Solomon said that he felt like a child who didn't know his way, and that there were so many people of Israel to lead. So Solomon asked God for wisdom. He asked for an understanding heart so that he could rule God's people well and know the difference between right and wrong. God was happy that Solomon asked for wisdom because it showed that his greatest desire was to help God's people. God said, I will certainly give you the wisdom and knowledge you requested, but I will also give you wealth, riches, and fame, such as no other king has had before you or will ever have in the future. Whoa! Then Solomon woke up and realized it had been a dream. Huh, wow! He went back to Jerusalem and made sacrifices to God. God did give all he said he would to Solomon. Solomon was known as a wise king and ruled God's people with wisdom for many years. Wow, that was 
amazing. So we see that King Solomon, he asked for wisdom from the Lord. He doesn't ask for possessions. He doesn't ask for things that aren't necessary. His heart is for God. And so he asked for wisdom. And we, we are just like Solomon. We need to ask for wisdom in our own life. And one place that we can go to get wisdom is the Bible. We know that it's full of good wisdom for us and to help us navigate life. One thing we learn in the Bible is that hatred is wrong and that we should have love cover all of our life instead of hatred. We also learn how to be a good friend. We learn how to walk through life with Jesus and what that looks like. Our life should always represent God and we learn how to do that by reading the Bible and learning from the wisdom that is inside of that. In every aspect of our life, we need to be like King Solomon who seeks and asks for wisdom and then is granted blessings from that. We saw that Solomon's heart was right with God, so he asked for wisdom instead of other things and then was granted many blessings because of that. We can have those same blessings just like King Solomon. So let's always remember that the Bible is where we get our wisdom from and we need to go to that for our source. In the Rotterdam loading bay, there were a ton of trucks and trains and lifts and all kinds of cargo would get loaded onto trucks and moved throughout the entire country. And two of the greatest working trucks there were Tess and Tyson, the semi-truck. Tess and Tyson worked really, really hard and they worked really, really long hours and they could always be trusted to get the cargo where it needed to go. And the boss pulled all the trucks together and one day went, Hello everybody, today's assignments are going to be big and they're going to be heavy. And we need our best trucks to be able to move them all across the country. And he looked at Tess and Tyson and said, You two, I have the most important and the most valuable cargo for you to move today. And you need to go see the big crane in order for you guys to get loaded up. So what are you waiting for? Move! So Tess and Tyson move along and they go see the big crane and the big crane says, Whoa, I've never seen the boss ask for anybody to move something this heavy. And so he picks up one of the crates and moves it along and drops it slowly onto Tess's truck and she says, Whoa, Mr. Crane's right. I've never had to deal with anything this heavy before. This is a lot. And the other crane gets loaded up and put onto Tyson and he says, Yeah, you're right. These crates are heavy and wow, they must sure be important if we're loading something like this. And so they got moving and they went down the freeway. And the freeway, they were making great time. They didn't encounter any problems or any stops and they were moving really well until they saw a sign that said, no overloaded trucks past this point. And Tyson started freaking out. He says, we can't go down the freeway. It's dangerous. The sign tells us not to. We can't move down this road. But Tess very, very calmly and very, very confidently says, Tyson, don't worry. We're going to be fine. You see, I know that we just need to exit right here, right before the sign, and we can hop off the road and we can find a different way around. So the two pull off of the freeway and as they're leaving off of the freeway, Tyson asks Tess and he says, how did you know that we were supposed to go down this road? Nothing about anything that I know says that we need to go down this road. So how do you know? And Tess was just about to answer that question. But they looked ahead on the road and they saw a ton of trucks down the road. And all of them were stopped completely and waiting. And Tyson's looking and looking and looking and he can't figure out what's going on. And he says, what in the world is going on with all these trucks? Why is everyone stopped? We should be moving. We have things to deliver. But Tess knew and said to Tyson, well, you see, I know that there's an accident up ahead. It'll clear up in just a couple of minutes. Don't worry. We'll be able to get through it. No problem. And Tyson, he had finally had enough. And he said, Tess, how do you know this? How do you know about the turnoff? How do you know about the accident? How do you know about all this stuff? And Tess said, well, it's easy. I got my handy GPS with me. And it always tells me what to do and where to go. And anything that comes up ahead, I know exactly how to handle it. You see, Tess's GPS is a lot like how we use the Bible. You see, we can use the Bible to help us out with all sorts of problems. The Bible helps teach us how much God loves us and who we are as people and how we can have a relationship with God. So the Bible is always there to answer any questions that we have. You see, so 
Tyson looked around and he was thinking, I want something like that. But he was a little bit nervous to ask. So he kind of quietly asked Tess. He goes, hey, Tess, that GPS of yours seems really cool. How, how can I get one of those? I really want one of those. And Tess said, well, it's easy. We can go get you one. It's really easy for you to go get your own GPS. You see, and the Bible is available for all people, not just as Christians, but we should be able to spread it around to everyone because everyone should know the help and the advice that the Bible gives. So maybe if you're, if you see a friend that's confused, maybe if you see a friend that's having a hard time, maybe if you see a friend that doesn't have anyone else around them, you can go up to them and you can be that friend and you can share the truths of the Bible with them. All right, guys, today's lesson was such a good and important lesson for your life. And that leaves you with a decision. Are you going to do one? Are you going to read the word of God? Are you going to understand it and apply that wisdom in your own personal life? But two, are you going to take the wisdom that you've learned from the Bible and are you going to share that with other people? And when you do that, you're pleasing God because you're helping share the word of God with other people. So that's our challenge for you today. And let, let's pray. So I want you guys to bow your heads. I want you guys to close your eyes. I want you to pray with me. Say, Dear God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the Bible. And I want to ask today that you help me to understand everything that's in the Bible and that you would help me to share that wisdom with other people. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Now, make sure if Pastor Mark isn't finished preaching that you're quiet and respectful so that you don't disrupt the message. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week.